right, Ty. Britt, you ready? I'm ready. All right, Ty, you ready? Always, Kevin. All right. Time out, Tyler. Who the heck are we taking the time out with today? Kevin, good morning, brother. Today, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, we have Brittany Simmons Willis, a nine to five per newer. She is the director of sales at PepsiCo and a franchise owner of PJ's Coffee of New Orleans. Brittany Willis, welcome to the party. Woo! It's 825 a.m. here in the DFW. We're, and like you said, uh, it's your later hours because you own a coffee shop. But oh, yeah. first, I got to know, what do you prefer, Broadway or Dixon Street? Ooh, Dixon. Dixon. <laughs> oh, yeah. From, okay. from what is it, wasabi sushi to the nightlife. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. awesome. And, and, and I saw that you you went to, you know, my, 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 I'm a Razorback at heart. You know, when people up north, they would be like, are you a Razorback fan? Mm -hmm. And I would say, I'm like part hog, dude. I, I don't know what <laughs> to do about it. Um, but, but what, um, I just want to know, what does someone that went to Vanderbilt and got their master's in Arkansas jump into sales for? Like, yeah, Kevin and I were just yeah. talking about that. I was like, I got to know this about Brittany. I was looking at her profile, <laughs> went to freaking Bandy yeah. and, and, and jumped right into the world of sales. So dip into that for us if you could. Yeah, I can say, honestly, you gentlemen, almost everything we do with sales. I mean, everything is about converting someone, right? Changing an opinion, influencing a decision. So for me, since I was a young girl, I knew I, wa I, knew I liked business. I was very enterprising. I had the lemonade stand. I was that chick. You know, I was leader of my, you know, president of my middle school. The list goes on and on. Um, and so I always knew that. Um, Vandy actually threw me a little bit of a curveball because Vandy doesn't have a traditional um, undergrad business, you know, major, but communications really got me prepared for all the PowerPoints I would be building and all the negotiating <laughs> I would be doing. Um, but, you know, I just, it, for me, it's the heart of, it's the heart of the consumer. I think at the end of the day, uh, again, it's about what's that end product. And it's so amazing to be able to sit across from Walmarts of the world, Amazons from the world, Targets of the world, and be able to influence decisions that impact thousands of stores and literally put smiles on people's faces. So yeah, a little more than as sales is really an extension of just a relationship. Um, and that's the fun part I like. Love how you put that. I I, I see as sales is, I mean, you, we're, we're typically dubbed as uh, what the used car salesman. Anytime uh -huh. you say that you're in sales, nobody ever goes to school for sales really and and yeah. i agree with you i think it's just human nature i think it's humanity right. i think um i have a, a real i guess deep question to start yeah. with for for you is is it impact or influence what do you think is more important in leadership today oh ooh. I, I i think impact i think influence is that you lean into but i think if you're impacting you're influencing and impact to me is almost synonymous with legacy. What are you doing that outlives you, right? And I think that that's what any leader should be striving for. And if you're building a legacy, my God, you're definitely influencing generations and people to come. Love that, love that. All right, another question. Do all great salespeople make great sales managers? Because that's usually what... <laughs> No, 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 no. And, and I'm assuming you mean salespeople managers. Yeah, yeah. 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 I can say that. So when you think about individual contributors versus people managers is what I'll speak to. Um, and in my realm of consumer packaged goods, sales is also connected. You can call it account management. It's really what it's about. We're not doing prospective sales. We're quite literally managing an account, right? Um, and being an individual contributor, I see a people manager are two different competencies. And I would hope that your organization is grooming you um, and, and providing you with examples in the current leaders that will enable you to be a good pay people leader. I think individual contributors is all about what, what output am I delivering for the company? People leadership, it's about, okay, I have to do my job and I have to develop you. Um, and I have to make sure that I'm managing a team. It was so funny. I was telling my husband, we actually have this, um, we're in our planning season right now. And, and you know, there's flights and things. And I'm just like, I'm the one that has to coordinate all this. I can't just show up anymore. I'm the one that's direct. Like, I'm the one that literally has to coordinate the meeting room. I mean, all these things to make sure that for my team, it's a seamless experience. And so that we can focus on the task at hand. So there's a lot of responsibility. Honestly, there's a burden. Burden uh, Leadership is a burden for sure. And I think that um, if you're not prepared for that and prepared to gracefully navigate through that, you can have some challenges managing people. Yeah. And it seems like you see leaders not only as a burden, but also as a privilege too at the yes. same time. Oh, yes. I love, I love that. Thank yes. you. And, and Brittany, how many folks are you leading over there on your team? Yeah, uh, my team, uh, my team, doo -doo -doo -doo. oh gosh, about five or six, I have to count. About five or six um, is on my team from direct reports and just the working team it takes to manage the sector of e-commerce that I'm responsible for. And at my coffee shop, um, I'm leading 15, 16 people. I mean, I have managers that, you know, do the day-to-day, -day, but I'm I'm definitely that very active man, you know, franchise owner. They know me. They like to see me. Miss Brittany, where have you been? 
fun, you know? So <laughs> it's really interesting the way that I balance just the, the teams that I support. And obviously from a, you know, a, a career standpoint, you know, and then my coffee shop, very interesting. Yeah, so we're we're going to get, we're going to yeah. get into all this. I am cool. so excited, Brittany. And, and, and I, I feel like you have a message to share with the world at all times is what, what kind of human being I think you are. Yes. So if, if I was driving down 635 or whatnot, or you pick one of these highways that we're in traffic on all the time around here, yeah. just sitting in traffic, hanging out. <laughs> um, if you could create a billboard, Brittany, with a message on it for all of us to look at every morning yes. before we get our coffee, what would that message say? You are the asset. Invest in yourself accordingly. Period. <laughs> mm. Period. Boom. Period. Yes. And how did you how did you learn that? Like, I mean, you know, you are a, a director of, of 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 sales at PepsiCo. For goodness sake, you are you're on the advisory board at the DEC Network. Looks like you're a board member at Water Tower Theater. It looks and then. To, on top of all this, Brittany, you're a franchise owner yeah. at PJ's Coffee. I'm exhausted Valor. hearing it. <laughs> yeah. How, how'd you get into the, to being a franchise owner uh, as well as doing all this? And like I said, I tried to book time on your calendar. That's why we're meeting at 8 15 in the morning here <laughs> to get some energy cranking. What, how'd you do it? What, who, who influenced you? And, yeah. and, and go take it from here, Brittany. Yeah, I would say quite literally, it was almost one of those just epiphany moments, but quite literally kind of my, my billboard messaging. I said, you know, as I had worked for three, three Fortune 500 organizations and I had seen the work that I'd done, of course, successes and failures, but I believe failures are just learnings along the way. Um, I was looking at the common denominator, even as I was navigating co companies, navigating different brands, the fact that I was given these big, uh, th these BHAGs, B big, hairy, audacious goals, right? And I'm knocking them out the part. I'm, 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 I'm moving the organization. I'm sitting across some COOs of my company telling them why e-commerce is important. I mean, and I had a moment where I said, I'm the common denominator here. And if I'm the common denominator that sounds quite valuable to me. And what do you do with assets? You, you, you invest in them, right? And for me, it was about, of course, I could continue down the path of the career that I have. And, you know, and there's, by the way, there is nothing wrong with a career and having a standard nine to five, nothing wrong with any, any really anyone's choices. For me, I said, this doesn't have to be my only choice. There are things that I can do as Brittany Willis that I possess. I possess the ability to impact an organization or a company that I would build for myself as much as these Fortune 500s that I work for. And especially as a Black woman, I don't think we in my community see enough of this. Like, gentlemen, the, the, the little girls that have come up to, to my store and have come to my counter and have said, mommy, I want to own a coffee shop one day because they saw another black woman do it. Like mm. that's impact. Right. Yeah. And I think, and for me, it's, it's the representation outside of investing in myself. And so that's my North star. That's what really keeps me going. And we can get into why franchising was the best mode for me as it, as I do balance both. Well, that message just got me out of bed and woke me up. Uh, that, that was that was probably like a two shot espresso of just what motivates you. Um, really, because that my heart is beating really fast right now. Um, but really, just your fact that you said that I'm the common denominator, right? And I shared before we got on the show, kind of what this gentleman across from me did for me, right? Um, and the question I guess I have for you is because I had that revelation myself, right? I identified that I myself too am that common denominator. I'm the people that people ask questions of yeah. and come to for my opinions. But I feel like it's easier for us to realize that in sales because it's so black and white to what the value we are driving within the organization from yeah, a sales good, perspective. Good. Yeah, you're right. Do you think it's as easy for others to identify those same strengths or those same, the putting a value actually on their time as we do in sales? Mm, so I feel like that was the first exercise for myself. How about you? That's an excellent question. I think that I love, you're right. It's very black or white. Brittany, your target is 10%. Did you, yeah. Are you 9.8 or 10.2? You know, yeah. like that's zero it. or a zero, you're that's a hero, zero. No yeah. in between. I think when you have a very clear target, yes, it's very black and white. I think what you're hitting on is the gray. And I think that um, in order to operate in the gray and understand the value in the gray, you have to be really in tune with the value that you're bringing 
in that, 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 that extends outside of that. So for example, for example, I think in fields where essentially, did you leave this place better than it came, than, 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 than it was when you arrived? You know what I mean? Like, um, little things like going, shoot, going to a birthday party. Hey, you know what? Let me go ahead and take a, take a bag of trash, you know, on my way out. Like yeah. simple little metrics. It's really not complicated. I think we overcomplicate it. It's really not complicated. And I think that, again, I go back to Kevin, you asked me a great question. I go back to impact, just taking a look and assessing the impact that you made. There have been times where I haven't made quarterly goals or haven't there. I don't think, I don't think I've missed an annual goal, but there have been times (laughs) where I haven't made quarterly goals. And I think that even in those moments, I said, okay, what did I do? You know what? I helped, I co-led an event that help to prepare more women for leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I mentored that young person that was struggling with Excel the same way I was. And so you just really have to look at it outside of, I think the sexy in the, in the, in the glamorized and like, you know, in the, in the very mundane, you know, ways of looking at it, I think just recalibrate how you assess it. And I do believe that you'll be able to, to, to zero in a bit more on that. Yeah, I love it because I see it. And what I'm hearing you say too, is that if you care more, you actually will have to sell less, right? That's it. And if, I, I agree. Really, yeah. Yeah. Agree. And if yep. you look at your job as just yeah. selling a product, it's that's, that's mundane. That's, that's Correct. boring. It feels like work, but if Correct. like yeah. you said, seeing that little girl that came in and then that's impact, right? You that's have impact. no idea what you just set off for her for future success outside of just that opportunity to just see that somebody else has done it before right. that understanding that the common denominator but understanding what is valuable mm-hmm. and that's why I started networking and personal branding myself more because I realized right people at the end of the day are really buying you mm-hmm. there is a company behind you right but as the saying goes they're buying you in that relationship yes. if I didn't have a network or if I didn't have a personal brand at this point I can leave an organization at any point in time. I, yep. I have that freedom or that value in myself. Take it all with you. Yeah. Correct. Take it all with exactly. You. And that's exact. How do you see it in this day and age? Like where oh, we're evolving? Because you're you're doing the work like some people are working two jobs just to make ends meet. And they're looking at you and saying, well, you had a great first job. What are you? Po- why are you possibly adding all this additional stress to your life? Yeah, How did you yeah. come to that conclusion? Yeah, I think I don't... This purpose and mission are sometimes hard to put into words, um, especially as somebody who's faith-based, right? Um, as I was navigating, I had I had decided to pursue franchising in PJ's Coffee before the pandemic. I continued despite the, the pandemic, which I think awesome. sometimes is crazy. Like yeah. I, would look husband, <laughs> yeah. I would look at my husband like, why am I doing this? I'm looking on TV and I can see restaurant doors shuttering and I'm entering into this space girl what's wrong with you and I think that I compare it to I say two things I was being obedient and I feel like I was on puppet strings I that's the best way that I can explain it to you gentlemen and I know it's it's and it's I know it's not easy to understand I know it's not you know but I was on assignment and I think that 18 months later with a thriving business you know um having withstood the pandemic um, you know, having balanced it both, you know, having emerged as a top performing location in Texas, to me, and again, spiritually, that's what my God was driving me to do. And, and I think it's just having that, for me, having that that core and that center that tells me, I'm not going to give you more than you can bear. Mm-hmm. Trust me. And mm-hmm. I have seen him come through other times in my life. And again, so that's that's the spiritual piece of it that I don't I don't want to lose sight of for me because that's a big part of it. The more kind of pragmatic side of it is, like I said, you get to a point where what seems stressful um, and what seems like a lot is really second nature. Managing businesses, I mean, I had, and I'm so thankful for my career. I was, for the past seven years, I have been pioneering e-commerce across three organizations. Um, Pepsi, I came in, Pepsi was a lot more further along, but I'm pioneering some growth initiatives with my current retailers. I have been, my sleeves have been rolled up for years. Mm -hmm. So honestly, starting a business and again, within a franchise model, which is really a blueprint, which is why I chose a franchise. I don't want to say it was nothing. Don't get me wrong. I don't oversimplify it. But Mm -hmm. it was an extension of a muscle that I had built because I flexed it time and time and time again. And so for me, it was about finding a lane, a very similar lane, um, a manageable lane, a lane that mitigates a little bit more risk to just kind of do what I'm already doing. And I had had also gotten to a point in my life and in my career where 
I was doing all that, you know, when you're in your twenties and you're in those early entry level jobs, you're, you're grinding, grinding, grinding. And don't get me wrong, the grind continues, but it's different. It's a different grind kind of at, at this level. Um, it's a bit more of my mind and building teams. And so I was assessing that as well. Would I have done this at 26 building my career? No, but mid thirties, it was the right time. Love that. God, Ty, can I ask just one more? Yeah, oh, Kevin, take it away, man. I could do this all day. I, I'm yeah, just you, hanging, man. I'm, I'm you, getting fired up. Brittany, the, what you said, right, is like uh, resiliency and 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 almost like you said, it was, people were probably calling you crazy to get into retail post-pandemic, crazy. right? Crazy. So do we commonly confuse some res, some's resiliencies and opportunities as craziness in the market? Yes, it's funny. Actually, there's actually a podcast about what I'm doing on this. Mark Cuban has a quote about entrepreneurship and, and having a little bit of crazy. Um, that, <laughs> um, but this is what I advise small business owners all the time. It's a little less crazy when you've done your research and when you know how to assess a business opportunity. So for me, coffee is the second largest co- traded commodity in the world. Mm-hmm. Americans drink more than three cups a day. Millennials and Gen Z are, are increasing their consumption. To me, that sounds like a very stable, and that not even seems like, that is a very stable industry. Mm-hmm. When I was pursuing my lease and about to sign on the next 10 years, even as the pandemic was raging, I drove around DFW and I and Frank and I looked at a couple of competitors, lines wrapped around the building. And so from what I could see on paper and from what I could analyze, from what I had learned at University of Arkansas, Sam Walton College of Business, you know, <laughs> you know what I learned <laughs> in those business cases, I literally was just applying it in a truly real world risk it all example. But it's a little less crazy, like I said, when when there when there's when you've done the math, when you know the facts and figures, I wasn't just jumping into something haphazardly, honey. I researched that backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And best believe the bank did the same thing with me as well. And yeah. so when you when you do your research, when you understand the industry you're going into, the competitive landscape, the, what makes PJ's coffee unique was my geographic location. It was the offering that we have. Oh, by the way, I grew up drinking it. So I know it's an amazing product. I'm not just kind of, you know, so yeah. all these things, it was a little less of crazy. Now, the crazy factor was the macro factor of the pandemic that was a huge risk that had me shaking in my boots mm-hmm. and some days still does. But guys, I'm just, I'm actually just so thankful for the experience. Again, I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm so thankful <laughs> for the experience because it's built, it's added to my story of resilience and my ability to lead through transformative times. Love it. Oh my goodness, Brittany. This, this is fantastic. I love a, a little less crazy when you've done your research. You know? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take that, you know, because uh yeah, and I was gonna ask you, uh, yes. I'm a big big spiritual fella. And how, how do you tap into your spirit, Brittany? I just love to ask fellow folks like you. Yeah. Uh, um, how do you get it, how do you get it going? How, and how do you sustain it as well? Yeah, you know, I'm very thankful. I think it's um I think the, the role that parents and adults play in bearing and building a spiritual foundation is very important. I, I accredit my grandmother for Sunday school, for, you know, my mother, for christening me, my, you know, supporting a baptism. I mean, it's been a part of my life. Um, I believe in praying without ceasing, which people interpret different ways, but for me, it's an ongoing conversation. So, so, you know, if I'm driving on the highway and I see a terrible accident, I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You know, thank you for sparing me. And I also say, you know, you know, cover them. You know, it's a, it's a, it's an ongoing conversation. Some days I look at my sales this morning, Every every day, honestly, I feel like it's it's a really weird insecurity. But every day, I feel like could could could, could today be the close the, the day I close? Who knows? But yeah, I open the app and I'll see I'm I'm up forty percent. I say thank you, Jesus, thank you, truly, like thank you. I mean, and and the most on my knees, thank you. Like none of this has to be that way. And so it's a, it's an ongoing relationship, Tyler, that I have. Um, and I think that I've been through things. I mean, I, I know you guys may or may not know this, but I'm from New Orleans. So I went through Katrina, you know, I mean, I've seen so many different really once in a lifetime experiences and, and have seen myself come out on the other on the other side. And again, another, it's a spiritual muscle is one that you, that you also flex. And I think that you just can't forget that he continues to show up for you. And sometimes it's different. Sometimes it's closed doors that you realize later was the blessing or it's the nose that you realize later is the blessing. But I think as long as you're in tune and you keep that relationship active and you look for those opportunities day over day to give thanks and to, you know, maybe even give provision, that's going to keep your relationship very strong. It's funny that you keep using that muscle analogy because literally last, uh, I think it was like last week I was talking about uh, optimism and gratitude is like a muscle. It grows the more you use it. And mm-hmm. 
I think what faith has taught me similar to you is um, it's not about just going and checking in for, for one hour a week. It's, yeah, correct. it's taking that message and, and just that belief in somebody else is looking over your shoulder at all times. Um, but I, I, I think I just boiled it down through what you had said too. And I just came to the realization that faith allows us to practice more gratitude for the exact same reason of what yes. you just said. I'm yes. grateful for X. Yes. And I think gratitude is really allows us to be more optimistic and more, uh, I, I think the reason why people are attracted to the three of us is we're very positive people. Um, yes. And I think what you said about going into a party and how you're going to impact that party. I don't take the bag of trash out, but your attitude also has a very big impact on that party. Yes. I was at a very crazy we weekend wedding. Um, hey. you know, I, weddings, I always tell you, if there's bad energy, it's a boring wedding. Yeah. <laughs> how do you continue to find your energy and your spunk? I mean, you, you have all this energy. Maybe it's the espresso. Maybe it's the beans that you're serving. I don't yes. know. But how do you continue to find that optimistic, that that yeah. being being so, I guess, um, optimistic about everything that you do and and futuristic, I guess, too? Yeah, I, I, I appreciate you uh, terming it as optimistic. I put myself in the pragmatist lane, but I, okay. I appreciate that very much. However, um, and I received that. I think what 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 you probably hear, um, I think what you probably hear is someone is really a confidence, a confidence. Mm -hmm that has withstood the test of time. Um, I also, it's not lost on me. I look at, I mean, I come from a family of very strong women, my mother, my grandmother. And for me, my, my, my husband actually joked when he met my mother, and my grandmother, he turned to me and he said, you had no other choice but to be who you are. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, ah, got it. <laughs> um, and, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, but I think that when it comes to just my options, I think it's it's being firmly rooted in my why. You know, my why is, like I said, investing in me. My why is continuing to be a representative of what's possible, you know, for women, for millennials, for minorities, um, you know, for people who I'm a big believer. The reason why I'm so passionate about nine to five preneurs is because there are things in us that we're meant to do. And if we feel like I can only do that, if I can replace supplement or replace my income entirely, you're never going to do those things. So I think mm -hmm. that it's important that we open that up. So I, you know, my why is a really big piece of it. Jim, I'm not going to lie. There are days, there have been a lot of days where I wish I could completely undo it all. I wish I could have never started. I mm -hmm. wish I, 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 this burden is too much to bear. There have been mornings I've woken up I don't know how to say this any other way. I mean, it literally felt like there was a boulder on my chest and I am mm -hmm. gasping for air. And then you could call it maybe anxiety. I don't even know. My, I mean, I, my husband was like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to lose sight of, because I think the highlight reel is cute, um, but that's not most of the days. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when I go to bed at midnight and my alarm goes off at four, my why is why I'm up. My why is what keeps me going when I haven't slept. It keeps me going when I regret some of the things or I think I regret some of the things that I do, I remember. Um, and I believe that, and again, going back to my faith, you know, I believe that purpose isn't always convenient. Purpose isn't always about you. Um, and the more I go through this journey and the more people, gentlemen, like if you look at my DMs and the emails I get and the people that come to my shop, I'm just, I'm so grateful and I'm so honored that I would, that I was chosen to play just a small role mm -hmm. in whether it's North Dallas, one person, one little girl. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if what I have to go through and the hardship it takes some days to do this, um, does that, then damn it, that's, that's enough. And I'm going to keep getting up. Man, I feel like I'm talking to myself in the mirror today. I don't know <laughs> this is so uh, nice. <laughs> Literally, because I, I I say very similar things. If I could just have one, enable one person's success or make one person's day, oh, do that for a year. That's 365. That's do that over a lifetime. Think about how great your impact is. And I love what you said is starting with your why is my why, right? And and, and I think that intentionality that you start every morning sets yeah. you up for success. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. Ty, what do you have? I get, Brittany, are you intimidated by anything? I mean, you, got, you said you have what some like you? here and there fears, Yikes. you know, which we all have. But have you ever sat down in front of like Mr. Target or Mr. Walmart? I love and been like, it. Oh, yeah. You know, no, I love that question. Thank you for that. Um, so I'm open. Yeah. Um, what scares me is not um because I've been through this before. Um, you know, like my father wasn't in my life, so I have abandoned. I have abandonment and worthiness issues. Those are my insecurities. 
Um, that's something my husband and I have worked through um, and, and I've worked through how to interpret aban abandonment, but worthiness, that's, that's, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. And I, obviously as you're climbing your, as you do, as you're climbing your career, your ascension and promotions come from being judged and evaluated and your worth of, you know, is this person going to do well on the job? So I think that as somebody who's been very passionate about my career and I give my all, that's a little bit of an Achilles heel. And again, it's it's the nature of the job, right? I mean, like, you know, even getting to, to director level, you have a point where it's like, am I, am I, you know, I feel I'm doing this, but you know, you hope that your organization, so I can tell that that's, that's a bit of an insecurity. I, I wish I would say like, we're definitely exposed every day to, to the judgment of our performance. And even the customer, if the customer, if, if I, if I piss the customer off, I mean, my VP is hearing about it and that's all the issues. So you got to your point, Tyler, you got the pressure of maintaining that relationship as well. So I just, I never want to be misperceived. I know I produce great worth. I, excuse me, value. I know I'm worthy of, of opportunities that I raise my hand for, because if I raise my hand for it, I'm confident I can do it. And I think for me, it's just wanting to make sure that that translates and that it's, and it's, um, it's transferable across other people where there's other opinions. That's been a tough part, honestly. Um, but you know, I can say that the part that I can control is just showing up and doing a damn good job. And that's pretty much worked out for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I learned my worthiness and my value, the, the more ideas that you were asked for, right? And then those ideas were taken as somebody else's. That's when I started to realize what my value actually was. That, oh, good one. That's a right? good one. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you that was that first. That's one of those things I used to PTSD into those items. But yep. that was how I came to the conclusion of, man, what I'm saying is so valuable because some of those environments in which we work, people aren't telling you what's valuable because they're, they're only using it to empower themselves or lift yep. themselves so, and you can't, and you can't pre pre preoccupy yourself with that. I, this sounds so cheesy, this, and I'm sorry, but I mean, I am not, I am my own competition. When I tell mm -hmm. you, I am not looking at what Jane or John are doing. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just not, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I wish you the best. I'm a big believer that <laughs> my claim does not dim yours. I mean, I, if you ask me for help, I'm going to give it to you. I don't feel threatened. What's mine is mine. Yes. And I think that's, that's also been, because when, when you're focused on the other, I mean, think about driving, when you're looking at other lanes, you might crash, yeah. stay in your lane, focus on your lane. And I promise you, I promise you that's going to give you way more than trying to either hold back or sabotage someone else. And that just isn't good karma either. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. I, I see it the exact same way. And, and I think it is that level of what you said earlier though, is that level of confidence. I think when you yeah. know who you are and who yeah. you want to be and where you're going, you're not worried about anybody else and what they're doing and what they're saying. So oh. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you, Brittany. Man, I could go all day. I have like 48 I, questions. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just keep writing things out over here too, Kevin. Well, Brittany, where, where do you see yourself? I say, I don't know. And uh, I mean, you're a dangerous weapon, man. Like this is, this is awesome. Like, I, I'm excited to uh, be, a, be a part of your fan club to, to see you grow over the years. And, and Kevin and I will be commenting on your posts from here on out. Yes. You know, get that algorithm cranking. Uh, it, no? We do this just for this purpose, Brittany. Uh, mm -hmm. We just love to meet people. I mean, at first, when we started this, they were like, well, what's your, what, what are you really doing this? And Kevin and I were like, I don't know. This, I don't know. I'm just doing it. Just stand we, by. We think you're cool. Good. Like, like um, so where, where do you see, and where, where, what part of Dallas are you in? Addison. So you're Addison, in Addison. Okay. Dallas. That's right. That's right. Yeah. The hopping place, my uh, company used to be over there in a beautiful, gorgeous building. And it was the saddest part was it was no one that was in there. You know, oh. it was like, just because the pandemic hit, right? Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. Thanks for but, um, yeah, Brittany, but where, where do you see someone like yourself in five to 10 years from now? What, what, what's that vision look like? I, I don't, I'm going to give you, I think, a disappointing answer. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. And I'm going to tell you why. Had you asked me five years ago, I'd be like, oh, da, 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 da. I am so, old. like the path, investing in myself has taken me down a path that I cannot i'm just like i'm on the ride i'm strapped in on the even just having conversations like this i mean you should have been man i know i mean you know um ebony magazine you know they, they have a podcast network and i have a podcast and I, I like it's just oh, like these are things that i never that like I, there's so many things coming i was on a today show three weeks ago like this things that i've never what <laughs> you know, this is what i'm saying this is what i'm saying like these are things that i've never conceived for myself and what it says to me kevin and tyler is I've been dreaming too small for what evidently is, is meant for me. So, I mean, I don't know. I think that for me, gentlemen, I love my career. Um, I love the entrepreneur space. And the more that I'm, I'm learning so much about building organizations and people and scaling around me so that I can 
do what I want to do. If I want to be a nine to five preneur and continue walking in that space, I have to invest in a foundation that allows me to do that. But mm -hmm. I can say that I love having the opportunity to have these platforms to impact people. So my hope is that I, that if there's anything in the next five to 10 years, I hope that that platform continues to expand. I think that, especially as I go to conferences, I think it's time for new faces and fresh, fresh faces and, and voices and perspectives to kind of emerge and have mm -hmm. the platform to kind of shed light. And I'm very passionate about helping professionals and helping entrepreneurs achieve their goals. And so I'm just hoping to continue to have the space to be able to do that. Now, how that happens, I don't know, but I'm along for the ride. Yeah. I, Real quick, I want to go. The Today Show? Where, where yeah. did, where, what? <laughs> so it was a, they, they, <laughs> they, did a feature, <laughs> they did a feature on coffee. Um, okay. And they, so I, they came to my shop for like a quick little interview on just how inflation's impacting me. And so, yeah, like crazy, crazy, wow. seriously. Wow. And did you say you had your own podcast with the Ebony Network? What, what, run that back by us. Yeah, I was, I mean, about a year ago, it was an opportunity that was to get my way. So, I mean, Ebony was a magazine, you know, yeah. I, I, I looked at growing up, you know, it was, an, it was a magazine started, I, I don't, I was started by, by, by black editorials. And I don't know where, where it stands today, but I mean, that's the, that's the audience and it's a huge legacy brand and so I was like oh um and you know he, I'm still kind of getting my, my feet wet in that space but just to be a part of the, the ebony you know media family is crazy right so it's just again I'm just yes like yes is kind of I think Shonda Rhimes had a I think wrote a book on the year of yes I think I'm kind of in something I'm on a season of yes like let me just continue to lean in um and accept these opportunities the ones that that align be clear prayer and align um, but yeah, it's a fun ride, guys. It really is. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I hate to say this again, it, huh? but Tyler, I mean, this is just like so surreal for me right now. It's not even funny because it's a, I, I, I literally have said very similar things, Brittany, about just saying yes, right? And when I started saying yes, and all it took was that first step, right, outside mm -hmm. that comfort zone. And that's Ooh. really where I was like, holy cow, I have been dreaming so small. It, it, you can get complacent. You can... Yes put yourself in that box very easily yeah. when you're not seeing the value, you don't know your strengths and you're, you, you feel like imposter syndrome. And sometimes that you're constantly oh, yeah. bad. Yes. And, and what I love that you just said is that you never conceive the future for yourself. It, it, it's hard to have that vision unless we put it on a vision board or yeah. uh, we put it on a piece of paper. Um, I have to go back to what you said, though, about what drives you, right? What drove you to open this business? I talk about this itch, right? This, this thing that I cannot scratch. It's on my part of my back that I just can't get rid of, but it's always there. Yeah. Talk about it with Tyler. I talk about it with my wife. I, I talk about it with other people. Mm -hmm. That entrepreneurial, that social importance, yeah. governance, environmental itch that I just know there's something else that I'm building towards. Yeah. I just can't, put my, I can't, I can't put it into words. I can't formulate it at all. Describe that itch because I think you talked about it, what was driving you from a faith perspective, but mm -hmm. obviously you knew there was something else out there for you outside of just the nine to five. Yeah. I mean, I think that for me, and I'm, I'm going to try not to, I'm going to try to get past the itch too. I'm trying to find more words, but Again, it's just as simple as I, I just knew, like, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't my ceiling. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and obviously there's a construct, you know, when you're in a company, you're in a company, you got to do things that exactly. way, that way, rat race, cool. For me, it was <laughs> like, you know, and for me, it's like, I can, like, I'm seeing what it's, especially as you climb and as you, you know, you have more responsibility to building and, you know, managing a budget and profit and all this good stuff. I said, okay, I, I see how this works. I can do this in a way that's rooted in something that I can pass down to someone mm -hmm. else because mm -hmm. I have worked for, I think three or four organizations now. I, and what that means is I've walked away from three. What do you really mm -hmm. have to show for that? Except for obviously all the skills that you gain. But my point is it's about, and again, it's about building something, as I said, that outlives me, um, whether it's the impact that I make because of what I'm doing, or for me, you know, it's, passing down an asset, you know, especially as you look at, if you, if you look at just um, the racial wealth gap in America, Black Americans have roughly $10,000 of, of net worth where the, the, the apex where, you know, white Americans have 100 and 110,000. That's a really big wealth gap. How do we play a role in dismantling that? Assets, wealth generation, ownership. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's the other piece of it. So, it, so in knowing that I had the skill sets to do that, 
and knowing that mm -hmm. franchising for me was the conduit through which I wanted to go about doing that. It was really a no brainer. I think that had I not done it to your point about the itch, had I not done it, I would, I know three years later, I would be sitting here so unfulfilled if I was exactly. only doing that. Yeah. I want to be, and I think I love my career more because mm -hmm. I'm full, I'm fulfilled. And I bring in a CEO hat to a director role every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I and that. so like, I love just what being in my lane and having my melting pot of skills working together, all just all all, all tides rise, all boats rise in that tide. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I hope that answers your question. Oh, oh big time. Good. I think you put it into great words. I mean, putting it in saying this isn't my ceiling, feeling unfulfilled. I think we started to realize the different complexes of what, what satisfies us and started to put a little bit more value on our own time and our own health and, yeah. and, and a variety of health, mental, social, physical, yeah. emotional. <laughs> Um, but I think what you're sharing is really the, the same conclusions. And I hope what everybody gets from this episode today is because this is a learning journey, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I try to share what Tyler helped me with, with others, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's just that understanding that we are collecting that intellectual and social capital over yeah. time, right? Yeah. And if you realize what you're actually learning and trying to learn and then asking the question why, which I assume is a question that you're also obsessed with, like I yeah. am, Um I think you start to put into to words and context as you're you're forming your own your your own value, right? You're yeah. you are your own player at that point. That's right? it. I view and myself I, as a player in the game, right? You know what <laughs> what you attributes and what skills? You said something that I think really wraps this up. You think about like Jordan LeBron, like of course Jordan was the Bulls. Uh, LeBron has been everywhere, no, you know, no pun intended. <laughs> 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 you know, and I think that when you're in an organization you are theirs. When the moment you realize, okay, I'm in your organization, but I am also capable of my own and I'm going to step out and build my yeah. own stuff. Those two can coexist. And I think that Jordan and LeBron are such a great example because you even you see them, LeBron with his school that they both have, you know, have a new, have numerous brands and investments where their faces are on it. Like I don't have to just be a point guard. Yep. Okay. I'm a point guard and I bring value here. And by the way, I enjoy it. But you know what? I'm also capable of launching a school. I'm also like, it's just, it, we don't have to be in a box, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have to be in a box. And I think that I would say the sports analogy, I think is really excites me because I think we can all relate to that. Yes. Um, what is your Nike? What is your Jordan? What is your school? What is your smart water? The list goes on. What is that for you? Because there's so much more in us than that. And I think that they're just, that's just a great example of-, of I, I love how you said it is like, you feel owned at that point, right? And, yeah, and, and you know what I mean? And it's like, wait a minute. No, I don't. I have a life outside of work. And the second yeah. that you tell me what I can do outside of work is the second I tell you I'm not working here, right? <laughs> and I, love so how, I, I totally, how, totally feel you. Yeah, and I love how, how opposite the, the, the it makes me feel. The more I'm doing outside of the, that nine to five you were saying, the easier the nine to five is. Yeah. It's like you come in with this fresh attack and it's not make or break because of I got to hit this number. It's like you're laid back. People can feel that energy. You're more giving, yes. I feel like. Yes. You're more selfless. Yes. Like, what the heck? You're going you. you. You hit your number and now you're helping other people, but you can go higher, but you're not. I'm like, no, man, I'm just trying to help out. You know, and the more I, yes. I invest into others, even um, yes. the more I know myself. It's all yes. opposite. It I all think works. Stay tuned. I'm writing an article on just this topic, like essentially why more companies need to hire entrepreneurs. Like if, yeah. if someone is, if someone is willing to do both, that's an asset that we're missing out on. I think entrepreneurs or side or nine to five entrepreneurs and those with side hustles, we feel insecure that the company won't support it. And the company may or may not care, but I think it's what you're hitting on. It's like that person brings a whole different vibe and a whole different skill set that is going to elevate the organization. And again, I want to I want to help dismantle how both sides, employers and employees, feel about that dynamic. But Tyler, what you said is spot on. I think well, it's, well, you get, put it into words with the CEO hat that you, that you wear into a manager's exactly role. Right. I think yeah. that is well, really you're you're being the leader that you want to work for. I love that. Right. Right. Well, well, Brittany, let's send Kevin some boudin balls one of these days. Hey, up, up ooh, to New York. Oh gosh, I want some. Ooh, that's some crawfish boudin. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just have to fly down and see what this Dallas place is all about. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's it's warm down here. It's great down here. It's a lot warmer, but I heard the bugs are bigger. That's what Tyler tells me. I don't see him that often. Well, he's, <laughs> he's in Argyle, so you, they might be out there. They might be out there. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Oh man, Brittany, this is a hoot. This is awesome. Yeah, um, I got I, I got say, thank you. One facts, I guess, at the end. What's your favorite book? I'm looking at it over here, my Harry Potter collection. Um, okay. <laughs> Harry Potter. And I think the one I think if I had to pick the fact so since you since you asked book, um, I love Deathly Hollows part two for obvious reasons. But, you know, I really, really think I liked Goblet of Fire because okay. so much came out in that book. But the entire series, oh, my God, but I will not nerd out. How's your for <laughs> by the way? I will not nerd out, though. <laughs> but, uh, Best top top song that you could sing without the music. Ew, probably Amazing Grace, maybe. I think. Ooh, or, and, and or a Beyonce song, of course. So <laughs> queen. she's the queen for a reason. She's the queen, yes. yes. Awesome, guys. Well, this is awesome. Uh, Brittany, thanks for your, for your time. Thanks for saying yes to my, my random whooping suey message I sent out to you. I just said, damn, this lady looks awesome, man. <laughs> he told me this morning, he goes, what do you know about Brittany? I said it, and I gave him your accolades. I was like, I, it's got to be fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, hope, I hope I did not disappoint. This was I had a, a blast. This was, this was so much fun. So yeah. uh, thank you so much.